thanks to um, thanks to Jeff again for um, having me here. It's the second time in twelve, um, second time in a few months actually that I've 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 been up in Grassmere trying to introduce Ruskin in twelve minutes. So <laughs> at least I have at least I have um, some experience. Last time it was Ruskin in the Lakes, and today the even more difficult task of introducing um, one of his most monumental, if least known, legacies: the diary notebooks. Um, they should be better known, in fact they should be very well known, because they've been available for, for some years, um, um, courtesy of Adam Matthew um, Publications uh, and Bill Piddock, um, originally um, in microform. Um, so they, they, we, we have made them available, but there's, there's, there's a lot more um, to do, as I shall explain. Um, the title I've given, incidentally, Wonderful Range of Mind, is the phrase used by Constable to describe Turner, but seems to me to be equally appropriate to Ruskin, who was, after all, Turner's greatest champion. Um, and was also used by the late John Gage in his great book on Turner, so it's a kind of memorial to him too. Um, to answer um, Jeff's question, what would we miss if we didn't have the diaries? Well, we would miss a large part, I think, of Ruskin's life and thought. Um, here he is in his famous image by Collingwood, sitting at um, Brantwood. The picture is, at, there are two versions, one is at the Ruskin Museum um, in Coniston. Um, I don't know if he's meant to be depicted writing a uh, work of prose or, um, or, or the diaries, but Ruskin was not just the, the writer celebrated in the um, 39 volumes of the library edition, um, whose centenary of completion, incidentally, we're, we're celebrating um, this year at the Ruskin Library in an exhibition and um, in a conference later on in Lancaster in, in September on um, um, editing the great... Um, and there are some of you, uh, as well as the Adam Matthew digital publication, who might think, perhaps, that Ruskin's diaries have actually been published. Not so. Um, there is an edition by Joan Evans, produced in three volumes between 1856 and 1859, and that's uh, Oxford University Press, and that's admirable in its way, although it's inadequately annotated and now very um, outdated. But it is only an edition of the diaries in the sense of journal material, that is to say, dated entries recording activities and thoughts on specific days. Uh, is this full? That's it. Yes. Um, and, of course, the diary notebooks are very much more than this. They do contain much journal material, but they are also notebooks filled with a huge range of material encompassing everything that interested Ruskin. Uh, and as you probably know, that was most things. Um, uh, what we have at Lancaster in the, in the White House collection um, on deposit in the care of the Ruskin Foundation um, are 29 volumes of... Um, of, of the diary notebooks covering um, 1835 to 1888. That's from the age of 16 to the, the last active year of, of, of his life um, in 1888. There are other notebooks. Uh, in fact, we have several, including one called the Coin Book and, and, and others that don't contain journal material. Um, and there are another half dozen or so um, containing certain diary, i.e. journal um, material, probably six or eight, depending on what you count, um, all of them in America, um, if, um, uh, certainly if you count the manuscripts of the, um, the verse accounts of tours um, to the lakes in 1830 and 1833. These are actually being covered in another digital project that's ongoing at the moment, um, devoted to Ruskin's Juvenilia, um, edited by David Hansen in um, southeastern Louisiana University. So all I can, can hope to do in the remaining, whatever it is, nine minutes, if I'm allowed, um, is to introduce a very small um, selection, really, in the hope of demonstrating the, um, the wide appeal as well as the intrinsic interest of this extraordinary range of material. Um, I won't reiterate what's already been said about the, 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 the physicality and the extraordinary um, uh, attraction of these things, but just to show you some of the uh, things that they do contain. Um, on the left... Um, uh, the 1835 diary, the very um, first um, that, um, uh, that we have, and on the right from 1840, 1841, um, most of the significant um, diary material, I think it can be, it, it can be said, is actually uh, related to travel. Um, um, Ruskin was an inveterate writer, scribbler, at any time of the day or night. Um, and indeed also a, a, a draftsman. When he was at home, he was working, essentially, whether it was in London or in Oxford or, or in Brantford uh, from 1871. And um, one of the other major diaries is known as the Brantford Diary. Um, that's actually in the Pierpont Morgan Library. 
now um, in, in New York, and that is essentially a record of people visiting him. Um, most of the diaries are effectively travel um, diaries to a large extent, but containing um, notebook material on all the subjects that were in, in, in involving him at the time. Um, and almost invariably, they are riddled with drawings um, because Ruskin is par excellence um, the great, um, well, he is, the, to my mind, the greatest amateur artist there has ever been in the sense of somebody who drew um, without being paid for it or without the need to, to show his drawings to anybody else. Um, so on the left, even as early as the age of 16, um, the 1835 diary shows his, going through the Alps, especially shows his interest in, in geology. And you can start to get these little drawings of, of mountains and then geological specimens. On the right, a few years later, he's still only, um, uh, only 21. Um, he starts a, uh, a system, effectively, um, of using the right-hand side, the, the rector, if you like, of, of the diaries um, for the notes. Uh, and on the left, keeping the sheet um, clean for um, drawings and other things. That, that becomes, it's not invariable, but it becomes essentially um, the way he, he, he did things. And then as to, as to physicality of the, uh, uh, of the material, this is just one out of, of, of so many examples. Um, this is the inside leaf of um, the 1844 diary. Um, uh, he was also, as, you, as you, some of you may know, um, an inveterate terror out. We were talking about stubs earlier on. Um, Andrew was talking about stubs. So we've got lots of stubs. Um, um, and also things removed for practical purposes. Um, we all know about Proust sitting in bed, cutting up his manuscripts and gluing them to, to, to together again. Ruskin did that as well a lot. A lot. Uh, he did everything much earlier than everybody else did. Um, <laughs> so, uh, and here, here you see that this page of the diary had uh, drawings on the right-hand side of, in this case, botanical studies. That we, there are thousands of those um, in, the, um, in, in the notebooks. This part um, on the left, um, which may or may not have been used for some purpose, actually fits top right hand corner of that excision um, but again if you, if you were only looking at one digital image you'd have to overlay it somehow to go back to the other one this is a challenge that we will that we will have shortly um, as I'll explain at the end um, and then you've got other fragments that have been sometimes he came, they came back they were sent back to him and he thought they were worth putting back in so we've actually got them stuck back in with with Ruskin's own sort of sticky tape or um, sealing wax, which presents certain conservational <laughs> problems as well. Um, but there again, you've got just, just the feeling of a thing that is not simply used and then put on the shelf and the next one picked up, but something that is constantly being used and reused as, as, as time goes by. Um, 